refers to demonstration houses are built in the Kura Great Love Village of Mozambique. 2,500 participants joined the online TEMA convention to discuss the COVID pandemic. I'm Sean Scanlon. This is Die Headlines. Let's get started. In 2019, Cyclone E-Day devastated Mozambique. In the aftermath, Zigi planned to build four Great Love Villages and 23 schools. Recently, two sample houses have been completed. Zigi volunteers, the Reconstruction Committee, and the mayor inspected the houses. Take a look. Coming to Kura Great Love Village in Mozambique, People are busy inspecting the quality of two simple houses. In terms of the design of the Great Love Village, we looked at the disaster-proof houses built by UN Habitat. So we have placed a 1,500-liter rain collection bucket in every house. This way, the villagers do not need to fetch water from the well at the village entrance. Among the 23 schools Tsuji has built in Mozambique, three schools are still under construction. They're expected to be completed in September or October. The master has said that we hope to give them a new city or town. The most important part is not the building, but how they can get back on their feet again. Although tropical cyclone Edai has destroyed the local buildings, Tsuji's love and spirit will help them start a new chapter of their lives. The Philippines Zigi Eye Center helped a homeless friend with cataract surgery. Randy not only has eye problems, but is also hard of hearing. When he went for surgery, he was nervous and couldn't follow directions. So staff played music to help comfort him ahead of his surgery. A coin to tap to the beats, Randy Portacio is often inside his own world after getting cataracts. Although he's disabled, he's very kind. When he was younger, he helped me out a lot. Like when a child was sick, he gave me money to purchase medicine. I saw them when I was a student. Brandy would help the jeepney driver help customers or help the nearby funeral home. They also sell candy here. The few boxes on the side are all of their belongings. On this day, their prayers have been answered. Celia guides Randy towards the City Philippines Eye Center for a checkup and a discussion for an operation date. Hoping his vision can be restored, Randy gets on the operation table, but is still very nervous. The medical staff play him some soothing music so he can receive his anesthesia shot for surgery. I thank God and Tsuji doctors for giving my nephew a free cataract operation. I'm so happy that he can see again. When my time comes, I'm comforted knowing his vision is restored. As Randy returns for a checkup post-surgery, the volunteers gain comfort in knowing he's grateful, content, and living his best life. After nearly two years of pandemic prevention, many people have learned to adapt to a new way of working. Atik in Tangerang, Indonesia, makes pastries at home. With the support of netizens, her daily income is now stable, and she's able to support her family. Take a look. The impact of the pandemic has forced many people to switch careers. One of them is housewife Atik, who lives in Banten province. She makes Dutch butter cakes and other cakes at home. In order to help the family, she learned how to make cakes online and even makes unique desserts. Now her products are highly sought after by many people. Since May last year, she ran a cake shop and sold online, and one day, she can make three to five cakes and even ten cakes during major festivals. Her customers are not only the neighbors around her, but also the parents of the school and customers in various regions. She sells all kinds of cakes, including Dutch butter cakes, wine mousse cakes, cheese cakes, marble cakes, and black glutinous rice cakes, and each one sells her around three U.S. dollars. Pertama, kita bikin, terus. Setelah teman nyoba, 
Ternyata dia bilang enak. At first I just made it for my friends to taste, who knows that everyone said it was delicious, and this led me to do a pre-order. Later I sold it through word of mouth, and my product became more popular. I'm very grateful for this good opportunity, especially doing it out of her because people want to send gift boxes to relatives and friends. So this lets me make cake every day, and the income is pretty good. Ke kerabat, kue bolu, leker, alhamdulillah setiap hari pas puasa itu bawa berkah banget, menghasilkan lumayan leker sama bolu kemarin, alhamdulillah. In order to maintain the quality standards of her cake, she uses top quality materials and does not forget to keep good hygiene. This has led many people to become her loyal customers. Peluang kayak kue gini maksudnya bisa jadi supaya orang-orang. The cake she made are delicious. It's not expensive, but it's also delicious. At first, I saw her post cake photos on social media. I was curious and I asked her about it. Because we live very close, I went directly to her house to buy it. Nah, aku coba WA, melalui WA ordernya, dan gitu langsung ke rumahnya, karena dekat. Running a small business as the pandemic situation continues in Tangerang has not been easy. This mother of three is worried about how to maintain health and finances of her family. For this reason, Atik has been working hard to develop her small business. Yeah, uh, apalagi ya, orang-orang. As a small and medium-sized enterprise, we need sales and we also need customers. If the customer's economy is not good, we'll naturally be affected. Para pembeli itu perekonomiannya terdampak. Otomatis ke kitanya juga terdampak kan. In order to speed up vaccinations, all government units across Indonesia are working together to provide vaccination services. Indonesian police headquarters have even set up nine vaccination centers allowing people to come in directly without advance appointments. Only one needs proper credentials to sign up for a shot. Here's more. In order to speed up vaccinations, the Jakarta Police Department set up nine vaccination stations in various areas of Jakarta, including Central Jakarta, Gambir, Tana Aban, Mentang, and other areas. As long as one brings ID card and fills out the registration form, residents can get the COVID vaccine. There's a limit, however, with only 500 spots per day. One vaccination site, the Hotel Borobudur, Jakarta Police Department Chief Fadil Imran stated that the number of people vaccinated daily reached 15,000. Seluruh Polres dan seluruh Polsek di setiap Polda. All police stations and town police stations, including the Jakarta Police Station, have launched vaccination services every day for residents, providing vaccination services to achieve herd immunity as soon as possible. Untuk mencapai target agar kekebalan Komunal kita bisa tercapai. In order to achieve the vaccination plan, the Jakarta Police Department has also cooperated with various groups such as the Trub Group. At the vaccination station, you can see that everyone strictly abides by pandemic prevention measures, such as keeping social distance, washing hands with soap, and taking body temperature. In order to avoid clusters, organizers ask vaccinated persons to return directly to their respective vehicles after receiving a vaccination. I saw the information on the launch of the vaccination service on the social media of CHOP Group. The service here is very good and well coordinated. Pertama kita antri dulu nomor antrian sudah sudah itu masuk ke dalam tunggu dulu. Setelah itu ada prosedur registrasi. First, we get their crew number and then review their information. After the vaccine is administered, we will give them a vaccination card. Everyone, let's get vaccinated together. In addition to boosting our immunity. It can also keep our body healthy. Vaksin itu tidak berbahaya. Ayo kita vaksin karena itu membuat kita menjaga imun kita tetap sehat dan tidak ada. Saya tidak merasakan efek samping apapun. Although the vaccination service at the Hotel Borobudur is about to come to an end, the vaccination service will continue at other police stations in Jakarta.
The 2021 TEMA convention held its closing ceremony due to the pandemic. The convention was held online, joined by more than 2,500 medical workers in 19 countries. They shared how to guard their posts to safeguard patients' lives and promote vegetarianism. Dr. Huang Sito, who is in Paraguay, shares that under the difficult circumstances, he saw many people losing their families. He hopes that such tragedies won't take place anymore, and he's grateful for Tsuji's supplies. Tsuji brothers and sisters are very mindful. They support us by delivering pandemic prevention supplies, medicines, and food to people in need. Dr. Fan Lihua in Hebei, China, has come into contact with Ziji because of a marrow transplant mission. She participates in home visits and recycling, calming her mind during the pandemic. Wuhan has been impacted since I read the master's books and get up early to listen to the master's teachings and embrace vegetarianism. I feel very calm while carrying out medical work. All people are living under the shadow of the pandemic. The master hopes everyone will learn from this disaster and seize the opportunities to live life to its fullest. Everyone upholds their sincere piety to protect our living beings. As a pandemic rages, international experts are thinking of ways to stop its spread. Team of Convention invited Academia Seneca's Chen Peizhi to share different countries' pandemic prevention measures. Did you volunteers around the world provide medicine and living supplies to safeguard the health of the people? When there are fast infections, all kinds of variants will appear. Academia Seneca Academician Chen Peizhi shares the responsibilities of medical war and society with the theme of looking back at COVID-19 2021. TSMC, Foxconn, and Ziji Foundation can work with the government to bring adequate vaccines. This is a very important social responsibility for us. In India, 33,400,000 people have contracted COVID-19. Ziji has crossed religious boundaries to provide pandemic prevention supplies. There are more than 100 charity organizations and religious groups that work with Tsuji to face this severe pandemic. Myanmar society is unstable, affecting the pandemic prevention work. The media has reported that confirmed patients are staying at home because the hospitals are full. Volunteers have brought pandemic prevention supplies to help the residents. People often come knocking at the door at our storage and office asking us to save their patients at home. Therefore, we have applied for oxygen generators with the government so we can lend them to the residents. From overseas to Taiwan, global city volunteers are doing their best to support the medical workers in their fight against the pandemic. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, the Ziji Taichung Tanzi Xintian Liaison Office opened to the public for the first time as a vaccination station was recently set up. Volunteers chatted with the elders and one policeman eagerly helped an elder in a wheelchair who has mobility issues. Let's take a look. The grandmother who suffers mobility issues wants to get out of the car and get a vaccine. Policeman Wang Jiakai enthusiastically rushes to help. There's a child in my family who has cerebral palsy, so having this type of child has helped me cultivate a more caring heart. My son was born prematurely at just six months, so there was congenital brain damage which affected his left lower limb. He wears corrective shoes to walk, which makes it difficult to walk. Seeing other people have similar problems makes me want to go and help out. Coming to serve here, it doesn't matter if your job is big or small. 
They all have a good relationship with the public. 慈济潭子新田 liaison office is adjacent to the Taichung City Hospital. For the first time, vaccination provision has been open to the public. Volunteers accompany visitors for a chat and ride a small cart, giving them peace of mind. This is a blessing card. You are going to get a vaccine now. I hope you are safe and healthy. The warmth of human kindness is on display here, and it's no wonder that everyone who has been here says this is the most compassionate vaccine location. Without a doubt, Zhiji volunteers always put service first. 53-year-old Mr. Liao in Jilong suffers from Parkinson's disease and severe asthma. He did not have a job and lived alone in his sister's house, which was dirty and messy for many years with many doors and windows broken. A Zigi volunteer from October 2020 began to care for him. In addition to cleaning his home, also invited a professional repair team to help renovate his home. There are no doors or windows, only four walls propping up a sheet metal roof. This house seems like it was abandoned for many years. In fact, there are people living inside. After sister came, she asked me, can I stand to live in a house like this? I said that I can't take it, but what can I do? It's very hard to live here in the winter. The old house was damaged and he had asthma attacks in winter. 53-year-old Mr. Liao, who lives alone, suffered from Parkinson's disease beginning eight years ago. He has serious hand tremor problem, leading him to give up his security work. He now has to rely upon government support and his sister, who provides assistance. Seeing him living alone in this kind of place was very difficult. I really can't bear it. After more than 10 years of accumulating, these items have been strewn both inside and outside the house. Since 2020, Zigi volunteers started to care for him and decided to create a comfortable and safe living environment for him. Everyone really just squatted down and picked up things that were useful. Then we divided the things into categories and also encouraged him to do the same. For the exterior, we asked professionals to help with the renovation. For the interior, we kept on encouraging him. We've been accompanying him to paint for a long time. After putting in new furniture, the place finally has the atmosphere of a home. Mr. Liao also made his first donation, hoping that the days to come will be more and more blessed. Sister said, this first received is the most important. I will post it. Through research, scientists found out that the athlete's mental state is closely connected to their brain waves. At NTNU Department of Physical Education and Sports Science, researchers utilize brain waves and eye tracking devices to keep athletes focused during training. With a proper mindset, athletes can improve their performance and do their best on the field. Sports that rely on accuracy isn't just a competitive match. There's more to it as research shows mental state control is often the key to winning. In other words, a changing mental state is often the key to winning. NTNU Department of Physical Education and Sports Science Professor Hong Chongming says that the key to keeping a peak performance under pressure is to be focused, having no random thoughts and a sense of control. At the final second of a match, one has to put them into a best state. Someone said that he had a feeling of like tunnel vision. It's like you're in a tunnel and you see the exit from the tunnel entrance. The exit is bright, so this is called tunnel vision. Under this circumstance, you won't hear anyone besides yourself. You won't hear the cheering from the audience. Utilizing a device to measure athletes' peak performance data, researchers provide crucial brainwave data two seconds before an athlete strikes the golf ball. These sounds represent a good mental control of an athlete. Athletes will try to come up with ways, like a trigger, to put them into a zone, because that zone will help them with a so-called tunnel vision. 
which will eliminate random and destructive thoughts from your brain. Different athletes have different triggers as they share different methods to keeping their peak performing conditions. World champion Yeni Chen listened to Jody Chang's songs while playing golf as it calms her down, releasing her pressure. At NTNU, graduate school students find out that imagination is a good practice to enhance performance. To me personally, I observe other professional golfers' moves. For example, before I started, I would step with both my feet and relax both hands. I will also keep focus onto the bow. Another method is I will imagine that I'm a good golfer and I will focus on my putting movement. Sometimes your brain confuses itself by thinking it needs more actions or do something a bit more. So when you're practicing, you need to have certain movement order, which will decrease unnecessary mistakes. The eye tracking device mainly tests for one side concentration. There's a lot of focus points here, so we can analyze the process of him being focused. At the two points here, we can tell if he's focused onto the target. If it's a rookie, there will be scattered dots. But if it's a professional, he'll be very focused onto the bullseye. Sports heavily rely on our sight. So in our eye tracking device research, we found a phenomenon called the quiet eye. For example, before taking a basketball shot, you often stare at the basket. So we discovered a relationship between quiet eye duration and athlete performance. Pro golfers usually have a longer quiet eye duration as they're more focused, yet it also causes them to perform worse under pressure. Once a three-time golf champion, European golfer Rory McRoy missed four short putts in an international competition, making him very frustrated. This is the temporal lobe, and this is the premortar cortex. Before putting, your brain will make several preparations for your moves. Although these moves are not yet executed, the brain is already in motion. If random thoughts are sent or signal into your ready zone, there are often situations when athletes perform worse under pressure. This means that the athlete analyzes and thinks too much. Research results prove that mental state and brain waves are heavily interconnected. As the athletes get their hands on technological data, they'll be able to prepare for the upcoming matches with full support. In March 2019, floods ravaged Papua Province, Indonesia. In the aftermath, Zigi started groundbreaking on 300 houses at Great Love Village, which recently hosted an opening ceremony. I'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching and enjoy the Mid Autumn Festival. Goodbye.